The views on this program do not reflect those of ONTV or its board of directors. Welcome to OA Now here. I'm Sammy Terramina, blogger of the, um, across the OA, around the OAA, um, blog, I mean, like, um, one of the hosts between Terminas and the host, one of the hosts of Blast Three Brain Cells on Oriented Television and also the host of Between Terminas as well. Um, like to welcome those hearing us on the, um, local voice on SoundCloud, also those, some on Facebook Live, um. We're going to recap. we got a lot to look at. Um, we're going to look at the boys' basketball previews coming into the year. Also, go more into depth around the girls' basketball range as well. Um, also, we're going to recap the state finals between um, Rochester Adams and um, Belleville and the Division One state finals that took place on Saturday afternoon over at Ford Field. Um, really surprised how that turned out, um, which was a complete... Head scratcher. Um, of course, um, we're gonna go. We're gonna recap that. Also, look at the um, heading into next season. Of course, what are the storylines gonna be for football? Um, obviously, you know when you look at the Division One State Finals, the o- NOA school was in there for the second straight year. Of course, West Bloomfield won it all last year. Um, but Rochester Adams, I mean, for them to get to Ford Field. Um, is really remarkable, especially with the lack of depth they've had, um, obviously, with them. Um, they ended up falling to Belleville 55-33 um, on a Saturday afternoon at Ford Field. Um, Bryce Underwood was the story for Belleville. Um, five touch, five passing touchdowns, um, one rushing. Um, I know he's only, a, and he's only a freshman, and that says a lot. Um, but... I think when you look at the difference in that game, you know, basically why Underwood went off in that game, I'm not making any excuses, but, you know, when you look at how Underwood's performance was, a lot of that, of course, Alex DeCreek, the um, star lineman for Rochester Adams, got hurt um, with an ankle injury, did not come back in that game, and it forced a lot of changes, which, you know, if, he was in there um i think it's a much different game but when you look at what underwood did i mean basically i don't think anybody had really exposed adams's pass defense more than what belleville did and to do this with a freshman quarterback um i know he's a gifted athlete and gifted player um and i didn't like the shenanigans he did afterwards um with the glasses and all that um you know i i just did not like that at all um but when you look at what they did to adams pass defense it was just insane i mean outscoring them 34 7 it was 34 to um 13 the second half i mean that's just insane um that is a it's it's insane number um what happened that second half um obviously when you look at you know i i was just shocked how underwood made big play after big play after big play and i just you know was going like where's adams's defense here can they make an adjustment and it looks like they did not and Unfortunately, what happened was Adams really, you know, and they were, I mean, like, and Belleville just took advantage. It was just the big plays. The big plays. I also think the weather kind of really being indoors kind of helped Belleville in this game because, no offense, if the game was outside and we saw, you know, the Michigan-Ohio State and the Michigan State-Penn State game, um, that was outdoors. Um, it was snowing cold really impossible for a um passing um for a passing attack to do really well um and then you look at Belleville here you know at plant and Adams both playing in a warm you know warm climate indoor stadium whereas I really thought that that helped Belleville out a lot was playing indoors um just playing indoors and I really think that was a big difference um obviously and i'm not 
taking anything for grant mean to bell not being into Belleville, but if this was played outdoors, um, I think it's a much different game because Adams is a team that likes to run the ball. You know, Levere, oh, we'll do that to you. I was just really shocked how they shut down Levere in the second half. I think a lot of that was the Creek's injury. Um, really, and it really was an important factor. I mean, the Decree injury was very important because for a few reasons. One, they did not, I mean, like the Creek, you know, he does so much on both sides of the ball. You know, he's that, he's that, he's their best pass rusher. I mean, he's their, their best lineman. I mean, and then take him out, you know, I thought really opened the door for Bryce Underwood to make those big plays. So, and Adams was really controlling the game early. I mean, they were up 17-7 at one point. I mean, everything was going their way early, and then everything changed. And, you know, Belleville ended up going down the field, their big plays, and scored on them. Um, so this is the most Adams has given up um, all season long. And that was insane. Just absolutely insane with, with the performance that Adams did. Um you know, what, what Belbo did, um, exposing Adams' pass defense. So that was something I was really shocked with, with Adams' passing defense was just really, really um, hard to describe. I mean, when I watched the game, you know, and I was, I was like, um, pretty busy keeping an eye on several things this past weekend. I mean, watching this girls' basketball scrimmage, I mean, and then, of course, watching the um, game. I mean, like, and then, you know, so it was really, really intense, you know, where seeing Adams up early. I mean, they played, I mean, they ran the veer to perfection and then forced to abandon it after they got down. And, you know, and then other plays that changed the game as well. Of course, the block punt for a touchdown. Um Really did not expect that. Um, Adams' special teams have been really good all year long. Um, they've been really good all year long. And then all of a sudden to see that happen, um, you know, where Adams had issues on special teams. I mean, that was very unusual for them. Um, a lot of that, you got to give credit to Belleville, obviously, for um, taking advantage. I thought that was another game changer was that special teams touchdown. Because that made it from 21-20 to 28-20. And then Belleville started rolling after that. So. That, to me, was the difference. I mean, you got to get credit where credit's due. I mean, Adams and Belleville, I mean, like, I mean, for Belleville, it's their first state title in school history. Um, you know, um, Coach Jermaine Crowell, I mean, it's his first as a head coach. He was an assistant at Troy Castec. Um, For Adams, you know, you got to look at, obviously, the um, path that they made. Um of course, knocking off um, some really good teams. You got knocked off Lapeer. You knocked off Oxford. You knocked off West Bloomfield. You knocked off Grand Blank. And then they get to get this to get the state final. I mean, obviously, you know, it's not an easy pass for for um, to say the least. But you know, for them to finish the year at thirteen and one, thirteenth most wins in school history. I mean that that really says a lot um, for what Tony Petrino's done. Um, looking at Adams' outlook next year in the next year, um, it wouldn't surprise anybody if they're in the red next year. It really wouldn't surprise anybody. Um, considering the success they've had, um, obviously when you look at Adams, they have proven they can play in the red. Um, not gonna, I mean, like they do have a starting quarterback coming back and, um, and, um, Parker Picot. Um, Brady Prescorn, I, I I can't say enough about this kid. Um, basketball standout, um, two touchdowns against Belleville, um, one off a ridiculous fourth down um, where he had to double catch for a touchdown and make a huge run into the end zone. I mean, Brady Prescorn is going to be a really dangerous player next year for Adams. Um, you know, I can just imagine the combination there with Pico and Prescorn. Um, you know, they do lose Griffin Hankey at running back, so I'm curious to see how they're going to handle that situation there. Um, they lose a lot up front, um, obviously. Um, so there's a lot of questions for Adams. I mean, like, especially up front. But anytime you return to quarterback, 
Um, Parker Pico, I mean, like, your your program strength is solid. I mean, there's a lot to like with Adams. I mean, like, it is more and more likely that they will be in the red next year, um, obviously. So that's something to really look at. Um, you know, of course, when you look at the OA next year, um, Harper Woods being in the league full-time. Um, this year, they were an independent. Um, so I'm curious to see how Harper Woods is going to do in the OAA, um, going against some pretty good teams. Um, and then you look at, of course, the storylines next year. I mean, there's a lot of storylines when you look at the season. I mean, recapping this season, obviously, for Adams, it was a really good year for them to get there. Um, just really interesting year in general for football. I mean... You know, we broke down Adam. I mean, like, we talked to Adams. West Bloomfield, of course, they're, you're going to be back. Um, they've got some pieces coming up I really like with them. Um, I mean, like, they do return them. Um, they do, they got a lot coming back, which is really good. Um, Clarkston, of course, you do lose Mike DePillo, but you do have Ethan Clark coming back. You got um, Cole Dillinger coming back as well. I mean, like, you know, John Call like to be your starting quarterback next year for Clarkston. Um, I think there's a lot to like, but that deep, but the defense is going to be the big question for Clarkston next year, obviously, and that's going to be something to keep an eye on. Oxford had a really good year this year. They lose a lot of experience, and well, Tate Mirrors is coming back next year for them. Um, so I'm curious to see where they go. Um, Lake Orion, obviously, with coach with them, Chris Bell coming back. Um, you know, coaching the team. I'm curious to see how this team's going to be. I mean, I think Lake Orion's going to be better next year. I really do. Um, A&T, of course, with Isaiah Marshall. Um, you know, when you look at A&T, obviously, with them, um, they do lose some, but you do return Isaiah Marshall. You got a nice nucleus coming back. Um, A&T could be a player next year. It could be. Um just curious to see how um, North Farmington will look. I mean, they lose a lot. I mean, obviously, Alex Shelby, Ryan, I mean, Ryan Shelby coming back is going to help them out. Um, just really disappointing year for North Farmington. Um, Stony Creek, um, you know, I'm curious to see what the Iron Mob culture does. I mean, I think Stony Creek, had a, they handled the red. They can survive the red. They knocked off Southfield. Um I think that's something to prove, I mean, to watch heading into next year. Um, you know, Rochester, they got a lot coming back. Um, you know, having a good year themselves, um, but they didn't make the play. I mean, they didn't make the playoffs, so, I mean, like, um, which was a unfortunate, but they're going to be solid next year. I mean, they got Alex Blano coming back. Um, and then you look at, of course, Groves. Groves, um, they had a rough year. Um, curious to see what Zach Rogers is going to do, um, <laughs> for, um, the Falcons next year. I mean, Seaholm had a really rough year. Um, young group, young talent. I mean, like, I think Seaholm will be better in the future as well. I mean, so we'll see what happens. Um, and then you got Berkeley had a nice year. I mean, they got, made the playoffs. Bloomfield Hills, I mean, you know, I talked a lot about them. Um, they should be solid next year. But I'm curious to see how they're going to do playing up a division. And I'm curious to see how they play up. Because it's looking more and more like they're going to likely be in the white next year. And then you look at Troy also. Um, I think when you look at the storylines, I mean, like Troy had a nice year. Abno got in the playoffs um, in Division Three. Um Pontiac, it was a struggle, but I thought they were they were much better than they were in years past. Um, and then you look at Royal Oak. They had some struggles this year. I mean, Berkeley had a great year. Um, you know, so I'm curious to see how the OA is going to make up next year. It's going to be every, it'd be very interesting. Um, Oak Park was another one. They had an up and down year as well. Um, forgot to mention them. Um, so when I look at the league next year, and also Farmington, they had an up and down year as well. I mean, struggled early and then picked it up late. So when I look at the OA next year, um, curious to see how things are going to look. I mean, obviously, when you look at 
I'm not going to do any projections or any previews. That'll be in the blog at Saginaw Bay 4650 at blogspot.com. I will do my early off-season top five um, heading into next year. Um, some really interesting storylines um, building for next year. Um, but recap in 2021, people are going to say for the OAA, you know, it was a good year for them, you know, a good year for the league. A lot of some shockers, some head scratchers. Um, you got a team made state final. Um, maybe you could wish for more schools to get into the postseason. Um, obviously, of course, a lot of OA only had, I think, nine schools that made it this year. I mean, I know they had um, Adams from the white. You had Clarkston, West Bloomfield um, from the red. And the blue, you had Berkeley. You had Berkeley, Avondale, Troy, Bloomfield, Hills all making the um, playoffs. I mean, people are going to say, well, the blue this year, you know, it wasn't as strong as it was. And proving that was the playoffs, obviously, with Troy getting shellacked by Chippewa Valley and then Bloopy Hills is getting just destroyed by Novi Detroit Catholic Central. I mean, really... You know, I, I think, you know, for them, it's it's going to be really interesting to see what happens, how the league's going to do next year. I mean, are, I've been hearing talk maybe three, maybe four. I mean, really interesting to see what happens going forward. Um, you know, when you look at the divisions next year, I mean, like, don't be surprised if they go four. But if they go three, so be it. But it is what is. So... We'll see what happens going forward. Of course, the teams you got to keep an eye on, obviously. We talked about Adams, how will they do, West Bloomfield. Will certainly be a storyline. Clarkston, Lake Orion, um, Harper Woods, um, A&T is a storyline as well. Um, those are going to be the big storylines around the OAA next year. Is And then, of course, how will Oxford do? I mean, like, obviously, Oxford um, had that incredible year with the veteran-heavy team, but... Now you lose that experience, and I'm curious to see how Oxford's going to look next year. So a lot of storylines um, looking at the next year. So, um, so you know, when you look at the 2021 year, I mean, you know, good year for some, rough year for rough year for for some as well. I mean, so I'm curious to see how the storylines are going to look hanging in the off season. Um, keep an eye on the blog at Saginaw Bay 4650. At blogspot.com for the latest information surrounding the um the um football off season. Obviously, if there's any coaching changes, we'll keep a really close eye on that um heading in this off season. Um, let's go now from football. Um, I do want to talk girls basketball. We've already uh, starting the season out underway. Um, of course, we're filming this week on Tuesday here. Um, um we've had some games played recently. Um. We've had um, Groves play Waterford Kettering. We've had Troy Athens, Royal Oak Shrine, Stony Creek, um, Westfield Prep, and Birmingham Marion and Clarkston. Um, I learned a little, I learned a lot about some of these teams. I mean, I learned a lot about, you know, you got to look at it from, I know it's game one. I know everybody's still, you know what I mean, trying to get into the, um, in the thick of it. Um, but I think there was some, I learned a little bit about some teams last night. I mean, I learned a little bit. Um, Stony Creek's going to be just fine. I mean, I know Sydney LaPerry had 27 points against Westfield Prep. Westfield Prep's a heck of a team. Um, even though Stony Creek lost 62-53, I got a lot to be optimistic about if you're Coach Kellen James. Because... You have a lot of experience back. You have both the Prairies. You have Mia Carson, Milana Scorch. You have, it's basically with Stony Creek, I wouldn't worry too much about them. I mean, they got nearly everybody back. They got, they got depth. They got a bench. I mean, I like Emily Dentral. I really like, I really like Emily Flynn coming off the bench. I mean, like, you look at that team, there's a lot to like for Coach Kellen James' team. A lot to like, you know, so that's a team that I really wouldn't have any concerns with right now would be Stony Creek. That's the team that I said, you know what? I think they're going to be fine. I think Stony Creek's going to be just fine in the red. 
I know Westfield Prep is very good. They are a very good team. Um, I mean, so when I look at Stony Creek, I don't see any concerns with them going forward. I, I just don't see any concerns with them. Now, the game with Lake Orion will be really interesting because that could be a potential district final preview. I mean, obviously, that's a really interesting matchup. I mean, between the Cougars and the Dragons. I mean, that'll be really interesting. I mean, Lake Orion does play Rochester, Ludor, Northwest. Um, and that's a tough matchup for them. I mean, you know, coming up on Tuesday. It's a, it's a really tough match for Lake Orion going against Rochester Hills, Ludor, Northwest. I mean, Emily Grunke is one of the best um, players in um, in Oakland County. I mean, as a big, you know, inside-out three-point shooter. I mean, also a good interior presence. Um, so I'm curious to see that matchup with Stony Creek and Lake Orion on Thursday. That'll be really, really interesting between those two. Um, Groves really had no problem with Waterford Kettering, 62-39. Um, 63-39. Um, Jordan Peterson, um, you know, has been playing really well. I mean, like, you know, I mean, like, um, they got others as well. Um, but it's a good win, good start for Coach Allison Heidi. I mean, really good start for her um, in her first game coaching the um, Falcons, um, especially in wake of what they've had to go through this offseason with all the, you know, with all the, all the hoopla, you know what I mean, during the offseason, all the, um, you know, the off-season stuff, um, you know, all the controversy. But for her, it's a good win for her. First win as a head coach, um, coaching. Um, for Groves, there's a lot of, um, I'm curious to see where this team can go forward. I mean, obviously, you know, when you look at Scott Bernstein releasing his top 10 for girls basketball, very curious on a couple of teams. Um, but. Groves, you know, was a team that I thought could um could make some noise as a dark horse candidate in the red. Um, you know, you obviously have West Olympia, Clarkston, Stony Creek, um, and Troy. But Groves is, you know, Groves will be there. I think Groves is a team to be a reckon with. Um, you know, obviously, you know, the schedule, the non conference is a lot lighter. Than it was um, last year, last season, last season their non conference was a um, was yikes. Um, but for Coach Allison Heidi, it's a good start for a program. Now Waterford Kettering's not the same team they've been in years past under Scott Woodall, but you know, but beating them, it's a good program win for them. But I'm just curious to see how. But it's a much different Waterford Kettering team. Than in years past. I mean, you know, so I know that, you know, the name says a lot, but when you look at the substance, you know what I mean? It's, you know, Kettering's not as good as, you know, years past. And I think that's something to really, really describe. And, but for Groves, this is a good step for them, good step for Heidi and her staff to really. Look at the train a little bit, you know. Um, look at her team. Um, I'm not sure if Kettering is a good indicator for them, um, considering that their non-conference is still very difficult. Um, just curious to see how. Um, very curious to see how this team will mesh. I mean, obviously, um, obviously with Groves, I mean, like, you know, for them, it's a good start. I mean. It's a really good start for them and, you know, really good start for them. So we'll see what happens there with them. Um, Troy Athens, Royal Oak Shrine. This one was a head scratcher for me. Um, now, yes, I know Royal Oak Shrine is a really good program. Um, but um, but just, you know, seeing what they did to Troy Athens um, the other night, 46-37. I mean, going like, wow, what do you say? I mean, what do you say? I mean, how do you describe this? I mean, I know Coach Stacy Klump's team had a lot of upside after the success they had, you know, last season, especially. They got a lot had a lot coming back. Obviously, Julian Siak. You look at Jordan Doyle. Um, you look at um 
But when you really look at Troy Athens, the problem for them is the interior. And I'm not being mean here. I mean, losing Claire Scholes to graduation, that's a huge loss for them. That's a huge loss. So when I look at this game and I look at 46-37, it looks to me like, you know, they didn't have a good shooting night. You know, and Royal Oaks tries a good team defensively. And, you know, so when you look at Athens, you know, I said, well, a couple of weeks ago, I said, well, okay. I think Athens is a dark horse team in the white. Because obviously you got, when you look at the white, you got Lake Orion, Oxford. Um, I think they're the two that really stand out. Um, North Farmington, you know, I'm concerned about their depths. Um, I mean, like, and then of course you have, um, but I thought Troy Athens would be a team that I would, I had them early on in the preseason ranks as probably my third best team right now behind Lake Orion and Oxford. But really surprised that now Shrine's a good team. I'm going to give them their credit. I'm going to give them their their credit. They're a really good team. But I just really shocked at the outcome that um that game really really looked at with Troy Athens. Um and especially going forward for them they still got to play Troy. And then you have that white schedule, which is daunting. At least you got to play Lake Orion, Oxford, North Farmington, Rochester, Rochester Adams, um, Berkeley, Bloomfield Hills, all twice. And that's not going to be easy at all. And you really look at the, I mean, like for me, when I look at Troy Athens, um, I've got more concerns than positive with Troy Athens. I mean, that's the big concern I have. I mean, not taking anything for grant wrong with Shrine, but still, it's a complete head scratcher for me that Athens would, um, you know, fall like that early on in a really good game with um, with Royal Oak Shrine. Um, you know, just really surprised at that outcome. So we'll see what happens. I um, mean, with Troy Athens there. Um, and then the last game, the recap, um, obviously had um. Clarkson and Birmingham Marion, um, that they played a really unique game over at um Clarkston the other night. Um and that was a very interesting game. It was like a tale of runs. I mean, Birmingham Marion looked you know, Clarkson looked really good early. Um behind the play of Maddie Sikorsky. Um she had twenty seven points in that game. Um but it wasn't enough. I mean it was 54-48 in favor of um, Birmingham Marion. Of course, the play of Sarah Sylvester was huge. Mackenzie Swanson had a nice game for Marion. Um, so when I look at this game here, I mean, you know, when you look at Clarkson, and, and I saw the game, I mean, I watched a little bit, you know what I mean, seeing the highlights and all that. Um, you know, besides Manny Sikorsky, I know Izzy Haley's very good. They got... um. Hernandez in the, um, they got Ava Hernandez as well. I mean, like, but where's the interior play for them? I mean, I know there's, I know their best big is out with an injury, but it looks like in the game, Sarah Sylvester had her way with, had her way in that game. I mean, the third quarter really was the difference where they outscored Clarkson 22 10. And that was a, a surprise there. So I'm curious to see. With Clarkston, because now they've got some things they got to work on. Obviously, when you're in a division with West Bloomfield, Stony Creek, Birmingham, Marion, I mean, Stone, West Bloomfield, Stony Creek, Groves, um, Troy, I mean, like, that's not going, in Royal Oak, that's not going to be easy. That division is not easy. I mean, and also A&T as well. I mean, like, a t got a nice young group as well, but. That's not easy for Clarkson. If you can't, you can't rely on one player to save you, even if it's Manny Sikorsky. I mean, obviously Izzy Haley, you know, you know, playing the role of, um, you know, you got Haley there, you got Hernandez there, you got Valencia there, you got others there, but you just can't rely on Sikorsky to carry you night in, night out. I know she had twenty seven. She had 30 in their game last year against Birmingham Marion in the um 
in the um, in the regional semifinal. So Birmingham Marion's game plan, I know Coach Marion's just throwing it very well. Um, the game plan was let Sikorsky score hers and shut everybody else down. That's the difference there. So when you really look at what they did the last two games was let Sikorsky score points and shut everybody else down. That's not going to work always. That's not going to always work. So when you look at Clarkston, if you're Coach Aaron Good now, you got to look at and say, okay, where is my secondary scoring going to come from? I mean, Sikorsky's a heck of a player. Don't get me wrong. But you got to find other scoring options because you're looking at because when you play a team like West Bloomfield, you know you're going to have to deal with both Davis sisters, both Hendricks sisters, my own Hooper, you know. That's not easy. You got to find secondary scoring for Coach Aaron Goodenough. You got to find secondary scoring. Um, and then you look at, obviously, um, the rest of the league. You got to look at, obviously, the rest of the teams. Um, obviously, when you look at the red, I mean, I saw West Bloomfield play. You know, with West Bloomfield, I talked to Coach Jeremy McAllister um, a couple days ago. Um, gonna be, I'm gonna be flat honest with you. They're, West Bloomfield is very good. They are very good. Now it's gonna take an adjustment period for um, a coaching transition for Coach um, McAllister. It's gonna take an it's gonna take an adjustment period. I mean, you have India Davis, you have Summer Davis. Um, the thing that I look at with the Davis sisters is, you know, for them. They're only sophomores. You know what I mean? They're still young kids. You know, they're still young players. But, you know, for them, you know, they're taking on a huge responsibility being like 1A, 1B. You know, that's not easy. You know, Myona Hooper sacrificing her game, you know, her scoring to be more of a true point guard. And then you have Bull Hendrick sisters coming back. That's going to help them when they get, once they get whole. The concern that I have with West Bloomfield. Is they're gonna they're gonna, they rely a lot on the Davis sisters so much, you know. Sometimes, and I know how great the Davis sisters are, but you know, there's gonna be teams that are gonna focus on them, are gonna focus on them, and focus on them. And you gotta find other options. The interior play of this team really concerns me. The depths on this team really concerns me. And I'm not being mean here, what I saw. I mean, once West Bloomfield gets everybody figured out, they're going to be just fine. But I'm curious to see how they're going to do against a team like Heartland. Against it, I mean, especially because they they got bigs. They're deep. I mean, Howell's another team that's big and deep. Um, You know, and then they have Birmingham Murray in their district. That's brutal. And they play a brutal schedule as well. Their non-conference is very brutal. I mean, playing likes of Brookingbrook, Illinois. They're playing Westfield Prep. I mean, you know, and that's not counting the red. That's very difficult for them. So, West Bloomfield, yes, they're the county's, Oakland County's best team. But I got some big concerns of what I saw with them. I mean, there is some serious concerns. The, the depth is a big concern. Um, and I'm also concerned about, you know, let's say if, um, they run into a team like a Heartland or if like, you know, I know there, it's going to take some time for them to develop, but if they run into a team like Heartland, that could be some problems, serious problems. Um, I mean, we talk Groves. I like where Groves is at. I like where Stoney's at right now. Um, Troy's an interesting one. Cause I'm curious to see how. They will handle things without Alyssa Mantuza. Um, of course, you have both Ziders, Kendall, and Reagan. Um, you have Mia Val Otis in the interior. Um, Charlotte Sabaka um, handling things as well. Um, curious to see where where Coach from Julius Porter is going to put her at. If she's going to put her at at the two guard or at the three. Very curious to see where. I know she's more of a three, but I think. You know, right now, for ball handling um, purposes, maybe the, maybe maybe playing some time to point. I mean, 
you know, so but there's a lot of concern with Troy with their guard situation. Um surrounding them. A and T very young team. Um you know, there's a lot to like at Jalen Austin back. Christian Banks is the one I'm watching. Um I've seen a lot of, I've seen her development um in the offseason on on Twitter feed on the Twitter feed. Um I mean a lot of optimism surrounding her and her development. Um curious to see how A and T is gonna look this year. I mean, it's hard to do a rebuild in the red. Um and I know Coach Sharika Cotrain. Um um but it's really hard to do a rebuild in the red. I mean, like, I've seen a lot of teams try, but it's really difficult. Really, really difficult. Um, obviously, when you look at the, um, when you look at, you know, you got them um, in Royal Oak, of course, I'm curious to see how they do. They lost a lot of talent a year ago. Um, so I'm curious to see what Brian Zapata has this year. Really curious. Um, we talked West Bloomfield, broke down, um, Broke down the red in the white. Obviously, we talked Troy Athens. Obviously, um, you know when you look at the white this year. I mean, Lake Ori and Oxford are going to be the two that really stand out. Um, Lake Ori, of course, team ranked in the county at eight. Um, Coach Bob Bridges has done a really nice job with this team. Um, obviously, Maddie Ebert, Kylie Heck, um, Chloe Wiegers, Taylor Dinda, um, Grace Sullivan. Um, um, Olivia Pawlowski, um, are some names to really watch out for this year. But Ryan Pawlowski's gonna be really interesting for Lake Orion. Um, when you look at the interior play, obviously with Katie Van Hecht's injury, um, the interior is gonna be the key for Lake Orion. I, I just think you know you got a lot of great guards on that team. Um, you know when you look at the interior, um, you know there's some things, but Lake Orion's a team I think could be. A, in line for a really good year. I really think the Dragons are a team to watch for. Oxford, of course, obviously is another one to watch. Um, Miranda Wilemko, Peyton Richter, um, and then their young, talented freshman. I mean, Nevada Woods is a really good player um, for them. Um, Allison Hufstead is another one for them. Um, curious to see what Oxford has this year. Very young group, very young team. I mean, we'll see what happens with them. Berkeley with Ashley Loon, um, very concerned about their depths, um, very concerned about program strengths. Your coach, Cody Feltner, I mean, there's a lot of concern with Berkeley. Um, they got, they're going to have to go through a coaching transition. Um, it's not going to be an easy transition period for them. Adams, obviously, with Joe Malberg there taking over. Like I said, um, coaching transition, obviously, but Malberg was hired late. Oh, no, early in the process. So I don't think the transition will be as bad, you know, but I think Malberg's done a really nice job with Adams. Um, Adams is a dark horse in the red and the white to watch. They're a dark horse to watch. Rochester's got a lot of height this year. Um, when I look at the Falcons, I mean, I'm curious to see what, what I'm coached and Bill Thurston has. I mean, obviously we talked about a couple weeks ago, we talked about their um, bad freshman, really good player in Ali Mack. Um, so I'm curious to see how that's going to look. Natalie Race is, I think, in line for a big year for Rochester. I mean, that's something to really watch for. Um, I mean, like, and let's not forget, they got coaching stability as well. You know what I mean? They've figured the roles out. Everything's figured out over there at Rochester. Um, been to a district final last two years. I mean, you know, that's really been the strength for Rochester. Um, you know, But I really like where Bill Thurston's team's at this year. I really do. Um, really, really do. Um, and then you look at, um, and then of course you look at Bloomfield Hills, Chris and Massey's team. Um, curious to see, you know, they got some young players, young talent. Um, really curious to see how they do. Really, really curious. Um, and then you look at North Farmington, obviously, Sal Leffler, um, uh, Penelope Curry. Um, the inside play is the big question for North Farmington because, and depth. I've heard a lot of things about North Farmington. I mean, they're going to have to rely a lot on Leffler and Curry to carry him, especially Leffler. Um, if if she struggles by any means, North Farmington's going to really struggle. And I think that's an honesty here. Because for Coach Jeff Simpson, I know there's a lot of upside with them. I just got a lot of concerns with North Farmington. Just a lot of concerns with them. 
So we'll see what happens with them. Um, that's my um, down, low down in the white. The blue, um, Harper Woods, watch for them. I think first year in the OAA, curious to see what they do. Farmington is I Farmington and Seahome are two really interesting teams. Um, Farmington with Anna Barrett back. Um, I mean, Brian Burns is going to be the key, I think, for them this year. They got a they got a sophomore um, with a lot of promise. Um, very curious to see what happens there. Seahome is a team I'm watching carefully. Really like what Coach um, Chris Manchester's done with that program, building it up. Brick from brick. Um, curious to see how Shea Manchester plays this year. Um, Seahome will be a team to watch. I was really impressed last year with the schedule they played. Um, the, I mean, I think playing a really tough non-conference has gotten them better. I mean, they, they're they playing a really tough OAA schedule. Um, you know, non-league with a lot of OAA teams in there. Um, including their game with Arch Rival Groves at Little Caesars Arena, which will be really interesting to see. Um, Oak Park, very curious to see how the coaching transition is going to be with Chantel Corson taking over there, um, for Coach Peg Evans' car. Um, really curious to see what happens there. Ferndale University, I've got a lot of, um, a lot of respect for Coach Justin Haas, Hoster and her team. Um, really good job for them. Um, they got a lot of experience coming back. Um, really curious to see what they do. Um, Pontiac, new coach, and, um, Roe Marshall, um, former Oakland University, Golden Grizzly, great, former Dallas Maverick player, um, curious to see how he's going to do with Pontiac, um, Ferndale with, um, with, um, coach, um, with, oh my God, the name is still on here, but I, I just, you know, it's ringing in my head, but, um, you know, um, former Oak Park boys basketball coach, um, Goodness gracious, I can't remember the name. <laughs> um, but I'm curious to see what Ferndale has this year. Um, you know, oh, Al Al Alcatello, that's the name for Ferndale, their new coach. Um, Alcatello, really, I'm curious to see what happens there. Um, and then Avondale. Avondale is an interesting team because Roy Christman, obviously Reagan Lawrence, um, Savannah Schmidt, Everything I've heard about him, I mean, I, I haven't heard much, but everything I've heard, I'm curious to see what happens with them. I mean, you know, a lot of people look at Avenue Possible Dark Horse in the blue. Um, I just don't know if I see that with them this year. I just don't know if I see it because I'm looking at the blue this year and I'm looking at, okay, Oak Park's a proven team. You look at Farmington's a proven team. Seahome's a proven team. Harper Woods, even though it's the first year in the league, they're a proven team because of the experience. So for Avondale, here's a team that last year was just doldrumed in the, in the blue last year. Now, the blue was much different. It was a 14 division. Um, but they were just, there were some games that were just blown out. There were some games, you know, they won one game last year. And that was an overtime against Bloomfield Hills. So when you really look at Avondale, a lot of questions for this team. A lot of them. So we'll see what happens with them. I'm curious to see what happens with, with Avondale. I mean, and then, so when you really look at the league this year, I mean, and then looking at the four teams previous who played on Monday night, compare those to playing on Tuesday night. So, I'm looking at it from a perspective of, okay, you're going to be, when I look at Stony Creek, they're fine. I don't have any concerns with them. I think they're going to be fine. Clarkston, I got some concerns with, especially in the interior. Um, and also, you can't rely on Mary Sikorsky to save you night in, night out. You can't do that. You got to find secondary scoring. That's a big concern I have with Clarkston. Athens, it's the interior. I mean, you got Jillian Siak, you have Ellie Musco, you have Jordan Doyle, you have, you got a lot of experience. You know, it's just, I know it's Royal Shrine's a really good team. So, we'll see what happens there. We'll see what happens. But I'm, 
I've got a little bit of concern with Troy Athens. And on Groves' side of things, you know, with them, I don't have, I don't have any concern with them at all. Now, yes, it's a good win for Coach Allison Heidi. It's her first win as head coach. But it's a long way to go. It's, it's a long way to go. So I'm curious to see what happens there. Um, so when I look at the Oakland County rankings from MI Prep Zone, um, released by Scott Bernstein, um, releasing his top 30, top 30 teams, um, curious to see, I think they're right. But I would, I kind of would have wished Oxford would have been in there instead of South Lion East, but I know South Lion East is one of the best teams in Lakes Valley this year. But, you know, I think Oxford and Lake Orion is going to have some two, two really interesting games this year. But I also think the White's going to be really good this year. We know the red. The blue, to me, it comes down to, okay, can your middle of the pack team perform in the blue? Because you have Avondale there, you have Oak Park there. Um, I think Oak Park, I would say right now, is above Avondale. Um, based on a program strength component, but even though Avondale's got more better players. Um, but right now, when I look at the blue right now, it's Harper Woods, Farmington, Seaholm. Those are your three top teams right now in that division. Um, and I think those three can flip-flop who could be first, second, and third in that division. That's how I feel right now with that. The white, I think it's going to come down to Lake Orion, Oxford. Um, North Farmington, Adams, Rochester, Dark Horses. Um, and then the red division, West Bloomfield, they got some concerns. Um, Clarkson, I got some concerns. I think it's a three team race between those three. I mean, them, West Bloomfield, Clarkson, Stony Creek. Troy's a possible dark horse contender. Um, Groves is another one, um, to watch. Um, I think Southfield could struggle this year. I think Royal Oak will also struggle this year. So we'll see what happens. I mean, the girls' basketball season's underway, um, starting up and everything. You know what I mean? Everything's going to be, you know, it's right now going in the right, on the right boat right now. So we'll see what happens going forward. Um, now let's go from the girls to the boys. Um, you know, when I look at the boys this year, um, obviously you got to look at Ferndale with the experience they got coming back. Um, Clarkson's another team to keep an eye on um, in the red division. Um, Oak Park, North Farmington are others to watch as well. Um, West Bloomfield, maybe. Um, Farmington could struggle this year in the, um, in the red. Um, go more into detail next week on the red, I mean, on the um, boys basketball previews. Um, obviously, when you look at, and then you look at the white, obviously you got we got Bloomfield Hills, Lake Orion, um, Troy, Stony Creek, and I mean, like, um, and Groves. I mean, when I look at the white, Bloomfield Hills obviously is going to be really good. I mean, especially with who they got back. Um, when you look at Canty, you look at Adam Jitch, you look at Lee. I mean, they got a lot. They got a lot back. Um, Lake Orion, you know, will be very interesting to keep an eye on. Um, Obviously, Alden Ritt, um, DJ Morrow um, is one of the players to watch for for them. Um, Malachi Granberry is an interesting player. Um, Blake Lydell is another one to watch. Um, curious to see where Lake Orion secondary scoring is going to come from besides Ritt. I mean, that's going to be the key for the Dragon season if you're Coach Joe Schroeder. Um, Groves, you got Lutt. You got him. Um, you got Lutz. You got him. Um, the bows, obviously, for them. Um, curious to see who else steps up for Coach Benny White's team. Very curious to see what happens there. Um, Troy with Darius Whiteside um, coming back. You got Mason Parker. I mean, you got a lot of... There's a lot to like with Troy, but I do think they're going to have some struggles early on. Um, so I'm curious to see what Troy has for Coach Gary Frelick and his team. Um, Stony Creek, you know, you're going to get a, um, I mean, you know what you're going to get with Stony Creek. I mean, Peyton Rumber back. I think that's a huge, um, 
huge get. They did get a transfer in there as well. And um, so I'm curious to see what Stony Creek has um this season. So the white will be really interesting, but I think it's gonna come down to I think it's Bloomfield Hills, Lake Orion. Um, right now, I would say right now are your two top teams right now in the white. The blue, I think, this is where I think it's going to be the most fun. It's going to be this division. Because Rochester, you got Berkeley, you got Oxford, you got Troy Athens. I mean, those are your teams you really got to watch for. I mean, is those teams. Rochester probably be the early favorite right now. But Berkeley's going to be a team to watch. Um, you also got Oxford in there. Troy Athens in there. Um, Seaholm. I think it's going to really struggle this year. I really do. Um, and then you have A&T. A&T, I also think, is going to also struggle as well. So when I look at the blue this year, I think it's going to – I think there's a lot of parity in that division. Um, but bottom line is, I think when you look at the white uh, and we look at the blue, um, Rochester right now will be the early favorite in that division. Um, and then the gold. Um, Harper Woods coming in the league, new coach in them. And um, Tawan Porter, um, you know, obviously um, you got a lot of experience coming back as well. So Harper Woods is a team to really watch out for. Um, Pontiac is another one to keep an eye on. Royal Oak is at a crossroads with their team this year. Ferndale University has got a new coach in Sammy Hines to really watch out for. Um, I'm curious to see how he's going to do with that program over there at Ferndale University um, to turn that program around. Um, and then it kept Avondale. I really like the direction that coach Pat Clancy has with that team. Um, really interesting to see what happens there, um, with, um, with Royal Oak. So when I look at the outlook right now for the blue, for the, um, for all the divisions, obviously, um, the red, um, you got to look at obviously, um, Burndale's your favorite followed by Clarkston, um, you know, then you have like um, North Farmington, Adams. Adams will be very good this year. I'm really high on Adams. Um, and then you have, um, then you have Oak Park, West Bloomfield, um, and then Farmington. So that's my early season. I mean, North Farmington, Adams, I expect will be at, will battle it out for maybe for third place in the red this year. Um, you know, I, I right now to be honest with you, I really would trust. I really trust Adams right now over North Farmington. Um, because, you know, it's going to take a little bit for their, um, the transfers over there to adjust over there. Um, it always has. So we'll see what happens there. I mean, Adams, obviously with Gunnar Walters coming back, that's a huge deal for them. Um, and then you look at on the white, you got Bloomfield Hills, obviously the favorite Lake Orion, you know, um, you know, I'm curious to see what Lake Orion has. I think that, I think the dragons could be a player in this division. Um, you got Troy Groves. Stony Creek as well. Um, Blue, you got Rochester. Um, you got Berkeley, Oxford, Troy, Athens. Um, you know, A&T, and then you have, um, and then Seaholm, and then, and then in the gold, you have Harper Woods, I, I, Harper Woods, um, Avondale, Pontiac, Royal Oak, and um, Ferndale University. So, Really interesting to keep an eye on the boy side of things. Um, my top 10 list, I do have it on my blog at Saginaw Bay 4650 at um, com. Um, my top 10 is out. Um, I do have um, Ferndale's my top ranked team, followed by um, followed by Clarkston. Um, Adams, three. Um, so those are my top three teams right now to really keep a close eye on heading into the season. I mean, North Farmington, four. Um, you know, Bloomby Hills five. I mean, Lake Orion six. Um, so those are my top six right now. I mean, curious to see what happens this year. Really, really intriguing storylines. I mean, teams that to keep a very close eye on this season, obviously. Um, so they got one more week of scrimmages um, before they start to play girls basketball. We know it's already underway. Um, so. A lot to look at this year. A lot to digest. A lot to um, look forward to. Um, obviously, we got other seasons kicking off as well pretty soon. Wrestling's going to be kicking off really soon. Competitive cheer's going to be kicking off. Um, wrestling, I still think... 
Oxford and Clarkson are the teams to beat. Um, hockey's underway as well. I mean, like Lake Orion, I think obviously it's the team to beat in hockey. Um, Clarkson's going to be solid. You got M1 there. Um, you got, um, I think when you look at hockey, Lake Orion's the team I think to really watch. I know Adam Kresge very well. Good friends with them. So, I think in hockey, Lake Orion's to watch. Um, cheerleading, I think it's going to come down to, yeah, the three Rochesters, Adams, Rochester, Stony Creek, Lake Orion, Troy, Athens. Um, they're definitely to watch there. Wrestling, it's going to come down to Oxford or Clarkston. I think they're the two top teams to watch um, this upcoming winter. So, a lot to look forward to um, heading into the season. I mean, there is a lot. A lot of opportunities to look forward to, obviously. Um, of course, recapping Adams um, lost to Belleville. Of course, I know that was a really hard one to um, digest, especially because I was really stunned about that game. I'm um, just watching it, which is, I couldn't believe it. You know what I mean? Just couldn't believe how Adams' pass defense got exposed in that game. So we'll see what happens going forward. Um, keeping a close eye out. Everybody on the season, obviously. Um, you know, make sure everybody's staying safe, staying healthy. I mean, like, um, you know, so make sure everybody, you know, see what happens going forward. Um, all right, everybody, I'm going to sign off here. Um, keep an eye on the blog at, at um, Saginaw Bay 4650 at blogspot.com. It's around the OAA. Um, also, keep a real close eye out on, um, keeping a very close eye out on um, a lot of things going on in the um, entire league and also in the state of Michigan as well. So we'll see what happens going forward. All right, now everybody, I'm going to sign it off here. Um, take care, everybody. God bless. See you all next week, everybody. Take care and see you all next week. God bless.